you know if you really look at it the last two three years have been pretty challenging right it's also been the phase of covid so no one could have possibly prepared for what uh, unprecedented change that covid brought about uh, so in the last two three years i i would believe a lot of customers a lot of cios weren't ready at all to deal with the sudden work from home experience they weren't ready to deal with all the security challenges that came about uh, and they certainly weren't ready to deal with um, you know the lack of skill sets on managing infrastructure remotely um, so the last two three years uh, is something that a lot of them could not plan for and i think as an easy route um, a lot of folks gravitated entirely to public cloud while public cloud has been a savior of sorts in many ways uh, we also believe and a lot of surveys consistently maintain that public cloud is not the only option a multi cloud hybrid cloud strategy is what seems to be resonating most with almost every large cio and cio's office out there so um, while there have been unprecedented challenges uh, the answer to all those challenges cannot be a single public cloud vendor solving each and every of those challenges so i think digital transformation is a is a very large statement right i think it's a very broad statement so if i have to break up digital transformation i think if you decide to go and um, look at digital transformation in a true sense i think it breaks down fundamentally into infrastructure modernization as phase 1 so if you choose to take it phase by phase step by step it's a lot easier so i would fundamentally say you know look at uh, infrastructure modernization you have a lot of legacy infrastructure in your data centers look at modernizing that so so anything which is three tier three tier storage three tier servers bare metal servers you know traditional virtualization look at probably moving to a hyper converged solution um and therefore really uh, consolidating your it infrastructure the next phase is saying hey can can my modernized infrastructure be a strong bridge to go and work in a multi cloud slash hybrid cloud platform where i can run predictable applications on my private cloud setup and i have the elasticity and i have the scalability to move to public cloud of choice while i manage manage to maintain all of this using a single pane of glass so while i modernize my infrastructure and i create a bridge which takes me to the public cloud as and when i need it and all of this using a single pane of glass of management i think that would be true digital transformation right and that's where i would believe that everyone should stay focused on and with the right layer of security being inbuilt i think that's something which is uh, which can stay the length of time and more importantly create ample opportunity to scale as opposed to trying directly from legacy and moving one stock one shot probably to the public cloud would not be the right answer from a costing perspective a lot of these things also fail because you realize your budget has increased multiple times because you could not possibly plan for uh, what classic 100% public cloud cost could come and damage you i think this has been a burning issue right for the longest time i could either be on the public cloud or i could be on my own data center uh, and i had to choose either or or um someone like nutanix which is the company that i represent has been entirely focused on giving customers the choice to run their applications and keep their data anywhere that could fundamentally be on premise on a hyper convert system in a in a data center in your office or in a service provider of your choice or you can choose to run that on any bare metal service on aws or azure uh, all of this works seamlessly on two fundamental counts one that it can be managed through a common console so i don't need to create new skill sets to manage this neither do i need to manage it using two different interfaces i think that's what nutanix brought to the table right my data could be in bombay on a private data center or it could be running on aws and i still use the nutanix management console so that was phase 1 the second piece was how do we bring a subscription like deployment on the private cloud setup or for that matter a public cloud setup one of the most exciting reasons why customers moved or gravitated towards public cloud is it gave you an option to have an opex pay as you use we were able to borrow the goodness of that subscription and bring that subscription offering onto our platform so today you have nutanix which gives you the option of running it anywhere using a single console 
plus subscription as a factor from a commercial perspective i think it's an absolute win-win as far as we're concerned we're finally ready we've got a lot of customers doing this across the board and it seems to be resonating very well with the cio community i think cloud's a reality already right i think cloud is uh, during the pandemic been a savior and i think cloud is here to stay but I believe it's not just the public cloud or the private cloud. I think it's going to be multi-cloud. I think they're going to be customers who are running on AWS. They're going to be customers running on GCP. They're going to be running on Azure and they're going to be running on Nutanix. It's not going to be a world where they're just going to be on one platform, lock, stock and barrel. It's going to be the multi-cloud world. Customers are going to run predictable applications on premise, on private clouds applications which require a lot of elasticity which are unpredictable probably short term on public cloud and most likely manage it all using a single console and they'll be in the position eventually to pick and choose what vm should reside where depending on the cost of that vm and what's the best residing cost for that vm so there are a lot of factors coming in there's a lot of intelligence being built in so i think we live and we will continue to live in a multi-cloud world but you know that essentially means customers will pick and choose not just stay with one uh, partner end to end so i think nutanix has been all about simplicity so one thing which will never change about nutanix from the time we started as a company in 2010 was to make IT simple, take away complexity, right? Uh, historically, managing technology has always been complexity. It required a lot of skill sets. It required a lot of effort to manage it. And we said, if managing an iPhone is as easy that even your grandmother can use it, why can't we bring in that same simplicity in managing something which runs in a data center? So that's been the philosophy of Nutanix. I mean, you can argue about everything. You can't argue saying I want it to be more complex. So for us, fundamental ethos of Nutanix has been simplicity. And we continue to drive that where we first simplified what resided on premise by bringing you a cloud like hyper converged infrastructure which merged server storage virtualization onto a single platform then in act two of the company we said why pay for virtualization engine when we can give you our own virtualization engine where you can have the choice and now the entire focus is to run it on any hardware any server vendor any virtualization partner and any cloud so the freedom of choice to use the Nutanix software on a platform of your choice resides with the customers without any lock-in, with complete portability, maintaining the same goodness of our management console, which is common across all platforms. And I think that's fundamentally what Nutanix is. And we'll continue to build this. We've, we've really fought some strong relationships with the like of Red Hat, for example, from a container platform, from a Kubernetes platform. We're building large service provider relationships in the market so that customers can choose a service provider of their choice, which is part by the new Nutanix cloud uh, so end-to-end -end, all of our focus and efforts would be around maintaining simplicity while we offer more services to customers I think Nutanix has been a rocket ship I mean uh, we're all privileged to be a part of this rocket ship uh, particularly in India we've crossed thousand customers uh, more importantly right our growth trajectory has been in excess of 60 65 percent per annum as per IDC uh, we have a, we've been market leaders in the HCI space for the last 15 straight quarters. We have an average market share of about 55%, uh, which is makes us bigger than every other competitor put together. So Nutanix uh, is obviously the preferred choice of CIOs. 10 out of the 10 large banks use Nutanix. 5 out of the 5 large ITITS companies use Nutanix. Multiple large hospitals, multiple large conglomerates, multiple government agencies are all happy customers of Nutanix and what we're most proud of is our support score which we call the NPS score where we have a support rating of 90 plus which is an NPS rating as we call it which is unmatched unparalleled in the industry so Nutanix has been uh, someone who's been uh, you know really customer focused we're obsessed with customer satisfaction uh, that's all we breathe by that we go out there and say every single day can we be relevant and important to our customers and partners that's the only thing that we live and die with for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel